that right there was just pure fun. I don't know if it was good for you, but it was good for me. <laughs> Party on one. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Get some. <laughs> Get some! <laughs> And I do have to say, it beats a double barrel shotgun any day of the week. Hi, I'm Jerry Mitchellark. I've been shooting three gun competitions, or multi-gun competitions, for going on 30 years now. So I can think of at least 50 major three gun victories. And also, I'm a small arms trainer. I work, work with some of the top military units. And my job there is to teach them high speed target acquisition and rapid fire with the platforms that you see here. So what we're going to cover here is some basic rifle training. And I also want to show you some of the products that I shoot, the platforms that I practice with, and what I try to achieve with each of them, and why they are different. So we'll start with my competition rifle, and this is a Smith & Wesson M&P 15, which you notice has an 18-inch stainless steel barrel. It has a Jerry mitchell -like compensator on it. This is something I engineered about 20 years ago. I spent a lot of time on the range getting it exactly the way I wanted it. It's a great compensator. I haven't really seen anything yet to beat it, and, it and, and, and at the price point is just unbeatable. So, adjustable gas block. This one has a Clark Custom Guns carbon fiber handguard. It's a very lightweight handguard. What I was trying to do here is get the weight of the whole package down to where it's just where I wanted it. Like I said, this is a Smith & Wesson M&P lower. I've got a JP light and bolt system in it, an Ace buttstock, an old A1 grip that I knocked all the checkering off. I like a small grip. It has an American Gold trigger in it. And as far as the optics, one thing good about an open division rifle is I can put as many optics and anything I want on it. I can have three bipods, seven scopes, that's all legal So in that division. So what I want to do when I set this up, I want to have the advantages of a red dot for close. So you notice I'm mounted on the side so I can shoot it real quick and I can go right into my Razor 1x6. This also is a Jerry mitchell -like reticle in this particular model and it's got hold over calibrations out to 600 yards so and it's a 1x6 magnification range which seems to work out really great in the, in the uh, three gun games one power you can shoot with both eyes open it also has a red dot you can you can put the you can uh, turn the dot on and use it as a red dot scope keep both eyes open for really cr close quarters work and also as a reference point for your holdover so it's proven to be a really really nice package so Two razor uh, sighting systems on one rifle. So that's my competition AR as you see it right here. What we have next to it is an IWI Tavor bullpup design. It's a polymer frame. Basically, uh, what they're trying to do here is make this as small as a package as you can for close quarters work in and out of automobiles, armored vehicles, or anything of, the, of that nature. 16 inch barrel, magazine to the rear side ejection totally different way to hold it totally different way to get it on target but also a very a very functional package this one has the uh, strike fire vortex red dot on it which is a very good package to put on a rifle system like this a red dot pretty much meets the uh, accuracy requirements of what you see here so it's a pretty interesting package as you see it next to it is an fn scar it's a 556 also it has the original FN muzzle brake on it. I've got a US Optics 1x4 with a dot reticle. It's not something that I shoot often. And what I want to do with this package, I use it to cross train with. It has the original trigger system in it, which means it's pretty much a GI spec trigger. It's kind of hard to shoot. It's not really the way I'd have it set up for my preference, but when I get into the shoot offs that FN is gracious enough to sponsor, we pretty much have to use their equipment. So and I don't have a choice of the optic that is available at the time so I set this up different than I would my competition guns to make it as hard as possible and that's one of the aspects of cross training is to go right into a different platform and shoot it well so that's the FN and next to it another M&P 15 this is a performance center lower this one has a hyper fire trigger system and it's totally different than what I used and what I use in competition has a JP light and uh, bolt 
a Viking Tactics Upper, JM Compensator, and another 1x6 Vortex Razor Telescopic Sight. You notice I increased the height of the, uh, the scope over the bore. It's not what I usually shoot, and that's why I put it that way. So when I cross train, I have to reference that detail and make it, make it apply to the target. Also, it's a different grip than I usually use. Uh, all this is set up again, guys, to make it harder for me to shoot. So when I go into this platform, I have to adapt to it. And I want to shoot it at the same level as I want to shoot my competition gun. So I use this to trick myself and I use this to, to actually shoot matches. So, And what I'm trying to do here is when I practice, is not to get comfortable in any one routine or any one product because in some of the matches you have to shoot other people's equipment. So that's the idea of what you see here. So we're going to move this out of the way and we're going to go into some basic rifle barkmanship stances. We're going to go over some standing positions and basically I have two distinct variations of the standing position. One of them is standing and shooting and the other one is going to be on the move. So anything else really doesn't apply to what I, want, what I need to do so I don't do it. So give you some idea. If I'm going to stand and you are the target and we do have a flag chamber guys so we're totally safe and empty. So if I was going to stand and you were the target, I want to stand as erect as I can. What I'm trying to do again is to look through the center of my glasses. If I find myself mounting into a target and I'm getting turtled and I'm looking through the top of the lens, that gives you an indication right there that you're not, have, you're not having a good field of view to the targets. So you want to try to keep your face as flat as you can. Bring your firearm to you and not you to the firearm. So you're the target. I'm going to stand just about like this. What I'm trying to do is keep my face as tall as I can and keep it practical into the target zone. You notice this left hand, I'm going to try to get my hands as far apart as I can. The reasons for that is like bracing a fence post. If I have both hands together like this, I've lost a lot of the brace effect of this hand. Say if this was on the ground and I actually had a brace going into the ground, if this buttstock was on hard surface and this was my brace, it's going to be very hard to control the end of that muzzle. If my brace was this long going into the ground, it's a lot easier to use that brace. So that's what I'm trying to do here, is get that bracing effect as far as I can apart. It makes the control a lot easier. So when I'm in the target zone, another thing you notice is my left hand. It's pretty much going to be parallel to the ground, my support hand. I've seen different variations of it. Some guys get a little higher, some don't. I think that's all a variation of how strong you are with your support hand. So there you are. You have to, you have to play with that and see where you are as a shooter. With your right hand or your actual your firing hand, there again I want to grip as high as I can on the, on, on the stock. A good rule of thumb is if I'm on target I take my support hand off. That's about how much control I want. Then I come in with my weak hand and just straighten it up. Now when you're actually firing that variation of hold is going to change from platform to platform. This is just a 5.56. It's got a good compensator on it. It doesn't take a whole lot of technique to keep it on target. The bigger the guns, the more stock they are, the more muscle you're going to need to control it. So, something to think about. My other stance would be, if I'm actually charging the target, I'd mount it up a little more square. And that's because when, I, when I'm trying to walk, I'm trying to advance as fast as I can. And the more, if I'm bladed into the target like this, it's really hard to keep my feet in line with the target zone. So I'm going to stand a little bit more square to the target, come in, but I'm still trying to grab it as far as I can. I'm going to get a little bit lower. The reason for that is when I'm walking, I'm trying to go heel to toe in as smooth a form, as, uh, in as smooth a fashion as possible without making the end of the gun jump with each step. So. I'm going to really bend my knees, walk in, come in, just like that. You'd be surprised how fast you can do it as long as you keep your feet rolling and not come ever into the ground with a flat foot. So, two basic stance, but when you get out on the range, that's when you really have to tailor the needs of you to the firearm. This is going to have so much, of, so much recoil and up to you, it's going to be up to you as a shooter to start diagnosing what needs to be done with your left hand and your right hand. Your target is going to tell you everything that you need to correct. Hey guys, I've got an IWI Tavor here. It's a bullpup design. So with your support hand or your weak hand, you're going to really have to change your technique a lot to make this an effective platform to the target. So I'm going to stand pretty much the same way. 
but with my support hand you notice it's going to be like closer together and that's just the way it is the good thing about the way this thing is designed the weights to the rear anyway so you're not really holding up a lot of weight with your support hand it's mostly going to be back on your strong hand so that aspect of it makes for some better control than it was a standard rifle just having the weight to the rear so bring it into your shoulder stand it into the target bring it up it's the same way guys if you can control it with one hand just come in with your support hand you notice I'm trying to keep I'm trying to keep my vision as square as I can to the target zone and that's something that's really critical is to see through the center of your glasses as much as you can because if you start to turn on like this when you go to when you go to transfer left and right odds are you're going to rainbow the gun and you're coming into the target in a choppy fashion you have to come over and come back up come over and come back up so the more erect you stand when you do your transfers left and right the flatter to the horizon and the quicker the transition so something to think about when you're training the other rifle again is the FN SCAR what's critical about this when you fire it guys it has a reciprocating charge handle you can mount it either left or right but every time you fire a shot that charge handle comes back at the same velocity as that bolt so if you have your thumb up like this behind that charge handle and you cook it off your, your thumb is going to take a beating but the, the, the bad part of it is that thumb in a way could short stroke that rifle and if you're in a bad situation you'll have a malfunction so you want to be very critical of that aspect here to put your hand in the right spot if you're going to charge it just bring it back in front make sure you don't grab it up close to the magazine have your thumb up like this it's going to be a big owie so that's one of the downsides of a reciprocating charge handle so also you have a lot shorter hand guard so you're going to have to use it a lot smarter than you would the full size ARs so if you're going to if you're going to grab it up try to always grab it as long as you can there again that elbow you want to try to work that elbow as best you can you get a lot of control from it so if you're having trouble responding or getting a responsive muzzle in between shots don't hesitate with your left arm to play with your elbow position that's probably where most of the problem is going to be we're getting ready to head out to the range so what I did I came back and I changed out my upper on my AR on my M&P 15 you know it's right right away it's a different hand guard this is a G10 this is made by Alexander Arms it's a 14 inch G10 material it has an adjustable gas block underneath here it also has a chrome line barrel. The reason I, I swapped out uppers, this is my play upper. When I go out and train, I get it hot, I kind of abuse it. I don't want to really run my match gun. So these guns shoot just about as accurate, and I saved my really good shooting gun for matches. So I'm going to, I'm going to go out and do some rattle battle. So I've got my training upper back on here. I've got the two Vortex optics on there, the one by six, and also the Razor Red Dot. It's set up exactly the way my other one is, and this is the one I train with a lot. So. That's the upper we're going to be shooting here in just a moment. And the ammunition we're going to shoot is Hornady makes a 55 grain full metal jacket training ammunition. So it's basically, it's a Hornady 55 grain ball round loaded on top of a, a steel case Verdan Prime disposable uh, casing. So, and one thing I do have to say about the Hornady 55 grain full metal jacket bullet, out of all the 55 grain FMJs I've ever shot, the Hornady round is the most consistently accurate. It's this round, a lot of guys even shoot it in competition out to two or 300 yards. So even though it is their basic ammunition that they sell, it's also a very good ammunition. So you, you're really lacking nothing here. If you don't reload, this is what you really want to be shooting, the 55 grain Hornady training ammo. So I got my upper there. Rifle ready to fly. I got my Hornady ammunition. We're going to head out to the range and do some rapid fire. Okay, guys, we made it out to the range. Got my trusty M&P rifle with my practice upper on the top here. I've got an MGM C-Zone target down there. What that means to me is it's a hardened rifle target. I'm 50 yards away, so that's relatively safe. I've shot him at this distance before with ball ammo. It's a good deal. MGM makes some really great targets. So, Anyway, get right into some shooting positions. I see a lot of guys on the range that are trying to shoot offhand like this at distance. Now what this, what this stance is really made to do is when you do a room entry and you've got guys zooming around, your elbows are tucked in, you're just trying to get yourself out of the way. This is a field shooting position. I want to use as much of me to get on the target and make it an easy performance as possible. So I'm going to stand there, my head erect as possible. I'm going to use my left arm as, to my advantage. I'm going to play with that elbow position to get it to where that firearm repeats the target. So 
Now what that means to the shooter is, to repeat the target is, every time I pull that trigger, it should be exactly where it was before I pull the trigger after the shot. If I got a hunt and peck and find that sight, my technique is way off base. So I know how this platform is set up, I know my stance, so I'm just going to do a little offhand for you, slow fire, give you an idea how easy it is to keep it on target if you have the right stance. So another thing that's critical, guys, with ARs, with compensators, if a compensator is effective, it's going to be brutal loud. And every time you, every time you see me on a match, or you see me practicing, or you see me on a range, and there's an AR present, or any high velocity rifle round, I'm going to have at least, at least three, at least two, <laughs> three, at least two layers of hearing protection. Okay, guys, if I had three years, I'd, I'd plug the third one too. But <laughs> I'm going to have earplugs in, and on the top, I want to have the best quality muff I can have. What I'm trying to do is, re is, is to reduce this vibration and also the, the sound impact, of course, coming through your face, coming through the side of your face. So I just, this is about the best I can do right here. Two hearing protections, I got the AR. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start off. Safety on, pointing in the safe direction. Drop the boat, finger out of trigger guard. On the timer, I'm just gonna come up and shoot the target six times. So just watch the end of the muzzle See what it looks like. You can see I'm not sighted for this ammo. <laughs> but you see how easy it returned? I'm aiming in the center so it's hitting to the left. I'm actually sighted in for a 60 grain bullet as it says on the cap here. So, but give you an idea, that was pretty, that was pretty easy to keep it on target. That was a 36, a 37, a 35. So we shot about 3,500 splits. Really no work at all, just using my left hand, use it to my advantage. The whole idea about rapid fire is not how fast you can shoot, but how fast you can accurately shoot. So it gives you a lot of feedback. And it's a great way to calibrate who you are to the platform that you have in your hands at that time. Be it a shotgun, rifle, pistol, it doesn't matter. So the whole idea behind rapid fire is it calibrates you to the platform. So that was about 35 splits. Let's see if we can go a little bit faster. That was a little bit faster. Still on target. So we're 25, 22, 20. So even at 20 splits, 2100 splits, right technique, you're right in the center of the target. So don't hesitate, guys, to use your left hand to your advantage and try something new. One thing you want to remember, guys, when you have your shooting position or your stance the way you want, you want to use that stance. All you want to do is pivot on your knees. You don't want to push the end of your muzzle from target to target. You want to pivot your knees. So I've got a good shooting position here, and I like it. So I'm just going to pivot on my knees. I've got a plate rack downrange at 50 yards or so. We're going to go ahead and engage it and see what it looks like. Here we go. Got a little wild on one, but I still got him. Give you an idea, guys. You've got a good position, you've got a good stance. Pivot on your knees, just keep the barrel parallel to the horizon, and you'll have a good performance. Okay, that was a very brief intro to practical rifle shooting. I could spend, well, it took me 30 years to understand where I'm at right now. So I'll give you some idea on a, on a YouTube experience. You're not going to learn it all in one, in one presentation. So, But what I do have available for you is this training video, Mitch Leck Practical Rifle. What this has is over two hours of training videos. It will entail everything from how to set your gun up, different ammunitions, how to set your scope, your stock, uh, multiple target engagements, shooting on a move, moving targets, uh, reactionary targets. The whole gamut of the experience of Practical Rifle is pretty much in this one package. This is 30 years worth of work and it's available at a reasonable price. So if you're interested in this package, you can get it from MitchLeck.com. Also, the rifle compensator that you see me using and also in the video is available at Mitchellack.com. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the short presentation that we had for you today. It was kind of fast paced, but we, we covered some really major points of interest. So, Also, stay tuned guys. We've got an FNP90 coming up. We've got a Desert Eagle 50 caliber chrome plated whiz gauge Vegematic and that ought to be some fun stuff there. I'm kind of excited about getting that in my hands and making it shoot fast. So, But anyway, if you like what you saw, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to Mitchellack.com. Also, like me on Facebook. You'll find a link on the description box below. 
and don't hesitate to send us some comments. We appreciate y'all. Uh, we appreciate your input.